Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to the Certification Training Module. This module is Isonus Hardware PowerNet Reader Controllers. Our course objectives are learn the advantages of the PowerNet Reader Controller, understand the visual indicators, settings, and connections on the PowerNet, understand the various methods to power the PowerNet, understand the wiring of the PowerNet pigtail, understand the accessories that can be used with a power net and why they would be used. So what is the power net? It's a network device, meaning the intelligence is at the door. It can store up to 64,000 card holders, 5,000 events, and 32 time zones. It is a mullion form factor. We have an optional integrated keypad. It's indoor outdoor IP56 rated. We have various power methods, PoE and external power. There's an optical tamper switch on the back which can send out an alert immediately if somebody tries to move or tamper with the PowerNet unit. AES 256-bit encryption. Available in standard 125 kHz and multi-technology 125 kHz and 13.56 MHz. So let's take a look at the front of the PowerNet. This PowerNet has the optional integrated keypad. We have our status LEDs that tell whether the door is locked, unlocked, or a credential was accepted or denied, or if it's connected to the host. Our optional keypad for dual authentication or pin entry. The prox reader, which is either 125 kilohertz or multi-technology, which includes 125 kilohertz. If we have a single door, we can install the power net at the door, plug it into our network, and administrate it via its local interface. When we have multiple power nets, use of the DB Crystal software is encouraged. And this is our optical tamper sensor. Remember during the install to put the reflective sticker on the wall behind the optical tamper sensor. Device info and color code, some basic information on the power net unit and the color code of the pigtail wires. Our reset switch which has two functions, the first press and hold for two seconds and then release. The amber LAN LED should turn off after releasing the button for about six seconds. If the LED did not go off, it did not reset. Secondly, you can press and hold for 10 seconds or until the amber LED turns off. Do not release the button. This will reset the power net back to factory default. These are factory setting jumpers, do not touch those. This is our pigtail connector, which we'll look at in a little more detail in the next slide. These are our power and relay jumpers. This tells us how the power net is powered and how the relay operates. We will look at these in more detail in future modules. And this is our RJ45 connection. This is the power net pigtail. This comes off of the back of the power net and is where we will make all of our connections. A quick overview, we have our power and our lock relay, our inputs, request to exit, door sensor, and an auxiliary input, our TTL outputs, and our RS-232 connection to our weekend interface module and long range readers. So let's take a look at some of the various power methods for the power net. Here we have a PoE switch connected to the power net. We'll run our pigtail from the power net up to a junction box above the door, typically. And then from there, we'll run our power wire down to the electric lock and tie that into the pigtail on the power net. We can use 802.3 AF or 802.3 AT power, but the power net will only draw a maximum of 11 watts. The 12 volt DC that's available on the power net itself has the 600 milliamp maximum. That's more than enough to power most electric strikes and peripheral devices connected to the power net. Our competition cannot match this. Most of them are using a standard one door controller with an ethernet module on it, which only provides 450 milliamps. With that 450 milliamps, you have to power a separate reader, your peripheral devices, and your electric lock, leaving very little power left over if you have enough for everything to begin with. We can also power other 12 volt DC devices at the door, such as a request to exit motion or a sounder. 
We can also power the power net via a 12 or 24 volt DC external power supply. We still have the same setup. We still need our network connection from the switch to the power net reader, except now we're going to have a power supply that's connected to provide that power to our power net and peripheral devices. This power supply can be in a network closet alongside the switch, or it can be out in the field wherever you have the nearest power source. Again, the input can be either 12 or 24 volt DC. The minimum draw of the power net is 125 milliamps at 12 volt DC or 70 milliamps at 24 volt DC. The lock relay is rated at 2 amps at 30 volts DC. So if you have a 24 volt lock that's going to be powering more than 2 amps, you'll need to provide an external relay or our external door kit is rated for up to 3 amps. There are many uses for using an external power supply. Perhaps we want centralized power and we don't have UPSs on all the switches. Fire alarm integration. It's much easier if we have a lot of doors that we have to integrate to the fire alarm if we have one central power supply that can tie into one relay on the fire alarm which could then release all of those doors. Plus if we're replacing an existing system with new power nets instead of IP bridges, we can reutilize existing power supplies that may be out in the field. In some cases, we may want to use a PoE splitter. So instead of having a PoE provided by the switch, we'll put in a mid-span. And then we'll put in a splitter device out at the door. This is useful especially for magnetic lock applications that are on exterior doors to isolate the power inside the building. With 802.3 AT power, splitters can provide 12 volt DC at 1.8 amps. So if we need additional power and we still want to utilize the existing infrastructure, we can use AT power, whether it's inherent on a switch or through a mid-span, and use a PoE splitter at the door to provide more power to the lock and other peripheral devices. With some proprietary products, it's possible to provide 12 volt DC at up to 5 amps. But remember, the power net relay is only rated for 2 amps and the external door kit relay is rated for 3 amps. This can be used to provide additional power while still utilizing a traditional network architecture. Again, this is also useful for securing magnetic locks on exterior doors when we want to isolate the power inside the building. The exterior door kit. This stops tampering with lock power. Yes, we do have the optical tamper sensor on the back of the reader, but if somebody does pull that reader off and nobody notices the alarm, we don't want that person to be able to apply power to the lock and be able to gain entry into the building. So how does this work? We'll take away our junction box and we'll show to EDK here. We're still going to power our power net via PoE and we're going to connect the wires from the pigtail to the actual external door kit. And then we'll connect the electric lock to the external door kit as well. Any valid unlock signal sends a secure signal to the EDK. The EDK determines if the signal is correct and if so it unlocks the door. It also provides a 3 amp rated relay. Since our readers have a mullion style, the mullion trim kit allows for easy install on single gang electrical boxes. Code sometimes requires that you have an electrical box behind the actual reader itself. It can also be used when the install surface is textured. So if we're installing this on a brick wall or a textured wall, we can use the mullion trim kit to make the install a lot easier for ourselves. So here's some 2x4 boxes. The mullion trim kit fits over that box, and then you install the power net reader on top of that. With the electric locks, they use a relay coil that powers up and down to unlock the lock. When power is disconnected, a surge of power is sent down the wire that could damage the power net reader. A simple diode will resolve most of these issues, and they come bundled with all of the power net readers. When power is applied to a magnetic lock, a large but fleeting current surge is absorbed by the lock's internal circuitry. This current can be up to 20 times the lock's normal rating and could damage our power net reader. The inrush suppressor device protects the power net device from damage. It's basically in series with the lock. 
How do we use the TTL outputs on our PowerNet reader? We use the secondary relay module. It provides up to four additional outputs. The relays are rated at 30 volt DC or 2 amps. However, only one output can be triggered at any one time. So if you want to use both the TTL outputs on your PowerNet reader, and they may be both activated at the same time, you'll want to use two secondary relay modules, one for each TTL output. Combined with a PowerNet with keypad, this can control up to four locks for data centers and medical cabinets and other items where only one lock will be opened at any one time. This is an example of the secondary relay module wiring. Our QSRM, which is our quad secondary relay module, which has our four outputs on there, and then four separate locks on there. So if we have four cabinets, anybody could read their card Press the cabinet that they want to open, one, two, three, or four, and that lock will open as long as they're authorized user. Our Wiegand interface module provides the PowerNet with a Wiegand interface, typically used for long range readers, biometrics, and legacy readers. This device is powered by the PowerNet, however, watch your power calculations to ensure that you have enough power for all devices from the PowerNet. So let's talk about our course objectives. We talked about the advantages of the PowerNet reader controller that it's a network device and is essentially a single door reader controller. We talked about the visual indicators, settings, and connections on the PowerNet. We talked about the various methods to power the PowerNet via PoE or an external power supply. We discussed a little bit of the wiring of the PowerNet pigtail and we'll go in much more detail in later modules on advanced wiring concepts. We talked about the accessories that can be used with the PowerNet and why they would be used. Things like the Mullion trim kit, the SRM, and the Wiegand interface module. Thank you for attending this course and we hope it was beneficial to you. Have a great day.